I may be in a gambling town, but my kind of gambling is to see whether we can find antiques and vintage that our collectors love to collect and that we can flip for a profit. I'm going to meet a couple of YouTubers inside here and we are going to see what we can find. So come on, let's go. Well, I see some people coming in the door who I want to introduce you to and here they are. It's Danny the Niche Lady and Tiffany from Thrifting Vegas. And I am so excited to be here with you. This is the first time we've gotten together to shop and we are at this great antique mall. And Danny said she used to be a dealer here, actually. Uh, the first space that I was just filming before they came in used to be hers. So, but she has other fish to fry. We'll show you that in another video. That's price. Oh, wait, is there a sale in this one? Uh, this one's 20% off oh, over 20, so yeah. Yeah, Danny was telling me that they do a lot of sales here, so we're going to take a look. Oh, I like that. It sort of looks like Anthony from California, maybe? Or is it Sirocco wood? Oh, it's like Sirocco then. But it doesn't feel like a Sirocco. No. It feels pretty solid. It's a little heavier, yeah. Well, it could oh, it have is. Been. Look, there's a seam. Yeah, it's it got a Sirocco. seam. Yeah, yeah, or one of those lookalikes, yeah. Just one? Fifteen on that. Fifteen's not bad. I mean, it's so, yeah, actually, there's there's something there. And uh, I like the John Perry, but I think I know where there's a better deal on one. Oh, you already spotted another one. <laughs> I spotted one in a video you did. Oh, yes. Oh, that's right. <laughs> So Tiffany was just showing Mickey, but I noticed this cork scene, and I like these. I'm starting to notice these. I remember them when I was a kid, and it seems like people are starting to collect them. And this one is, uh, wow, it's got a little native figure. I have never seen that in one before. It's $45. Usually I see them with birch bark, and they look like mountains. Oh, 40% off wall decor. Oh, so suddenly that makes it, got to do some math here, that makes it... $4. Wow, well, suddenly that might be a buy. Okay, this next space here is 25% off, so we are definitely hitting the holiday sales. You know, a lot of antique malls are busier right after Christmas than uh, before because people come with their return money. And so we're going to take a look and see if we see anything that we can make some money on in here or add to our collections. I mean, a lot of what we do with these videos, of course, is we're trying to show things that collectors really like and talk about why so that if you are a collector or you aspire to be one, you can learn more about it. I like these wall hanging shelves. They're very useful because I do real world selling. So this one is 75 with the discount. And this one down here with the mirror back is about a hundred and a hundred or so with the discount. Ooh, what'd you find? Oh, I like the graphic. Isn't that great? Like the original. Oh, and it's Pyrex. Oh, Pyrex Corning. Yeah, actually, that's that's kind of interesting. Fifteen dollars. Yeah. The box is great, it's isn't it? Yeah, the box yeah. is everything. Yeah, I would actually. I mean, the box is what I want to sell. I don't. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And the fact that it has the the percolator in it is sort of a bonus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of collectors like to have boxes like this because if they're collecting Corningware or Pyrex, then it's a good display base. So we're all kind of hovering around it. Oh, the original coffee. Uh... No, it's the heat spreader grid. Oh, wow. It's still in its little original oh. package. Yep. Oh, there's more. Somebody got this for Christmas and didn't use it in 1970. It's got the little instruction thing with the recipe for coffee, too. Is there a date? What is the recipe for coffee? It's like coffee and water equals coffee, right? <laughs> <laughs> wow, look at this velvet painting. <laughs> I remember when people said, oh, velvet paintings, they'll never be collectible. Well, guess what? Times have moved on and a lot of folks who remember this stuff are into that. Lone Brow sign is about $60 with a discount. Blanket or a bag of oranges, right? Okay. That's right. <laughs> a velvet painting, a Mexican blanket, or a bag of oranges. That's so great. Yes, that's right. And your windshield washed. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Danny was just mentioning a lot of people are liking these because the paint glows under black light. And that makes perfect sense. It's like the old black light posters. Oh, he is fantastic. I 
Oh, yes, I like that with the head up. Yes, he's great. Oh, and this bird looks like it could be Murano with that nice uh, oh, gold, gold flecking in the middle of it. Hmm. I volunteer to lay down and see how much he is. Oh, okay, very good. I'll let you. Um, 95 on the orange bird. 95, okay. Let's see. I don't know. No, the cat, the cat is a mystery. Yeah, sometimes you have to stand on your head in these places. <laughs> I like this vase here. It's Catalina pottery, and it says it's pre-1937, which would mean it would have the Catalina Island stamp on it, if that's the case. I don't see the tag because it's moved to the back, so I think I'm going to ask for someone to come assist us with this because I'm just curious to show that to you in an uh, attempt to... Um, show you something that might be useful for you to know, and also because I really like Catalina Pottery, and if the price is right, I would buy it. Catalina Pottery or Catalina Island? Okay. All right, it says Catalina Pottery. So this is actually after Franciscan Ware got hold of them, and so I actually am... I'm not sure that it is pre-1937. I think it's actually after 1937 up until the 40s. So it's very pretty though. And let's see what the price is, 200. So uh, I think I'm gonna leave that one, but that's an interesting mark for you to know. It's not, it's not as educated. Yeah, the, uh, I agree. The, the antique malls, uh, there are a lot of dealers who, um, you know, they know what they know, but they don't know all. And so we really, that's part of why we do this is to try to help you understand what is really old and what is uh, newer. We were talking about this because we both saw this desk lamp. It's perfectly nice. Yay. It's $95, but you know, it's probably 1980 vintage. Now these sand paintings I like, and Cat the Nurse Flipper likes these too, so I always look at them. They're priced about $40 each. These are um, Hopi and Navajo traditions. This is a cute space with some vintage Christmas that I am glad to see because um, we definitely see a lot of newer Christmas being kind of mixed in, which is part of the fun of Christmas. You can mix new and old, but I wanted to show you this guy because Jeffrey on Real Nifty Vintage taught me that I believe these are by the Radford Company, and that's probably because Barb collects this stuff. You see the old plastic Santas. They were candy containers and various things, but this one is pushing a sleigh, and it's priced at $18, which is a pretty fair collector price for that. To me, it's like, no. <laughs> I don't want, want it on. Yeah, yeah, I want to sell Christmas when it's Christmas, and then next year I'll get more. Exactly. Here is an Anna Lee doll with an address book. I have not seen this one before, and it's only $12. That's actually a pretty good price. People either love or hate Anna Lee, but I think the fact that it's all hand-painted and the eyes are very expressive is the reason that to a lot of people this is really cute. I think some people, they see the stitching and the faces, you know, maybe are too whimsical for them, but I like them. Oh, I'm kind of eavesdropping on Tiffany. She just saw the basketball girl in Annalee, and I have not seen that piece, so I'll have to focus in. Yeah, that's actually really cool. And $14, that's not something I've ever seen. That seems reasonable. Yeah, that is a good price. And Tiffany is spotting Annalee all over the place, and she made a good point, which you should watch her videos, by the way, if you have not watched Thrifting Vegas. She's very very good at picking at uh, the uh, thrift store. She's done this for a long time. She really knows her stuff, so I recommend watching her channel. Uh, but she pointed out that these have newer tags as well. They are still making Annalie, so, uh, but they are still making it. The designs are done in New Hampshire. I'm not sure if they're still making them in New Hampshire, and I think that's the thing to look for with the tags. Oh, Danny's showing us the cadmium coming out on the Noritake Perspective stems here. And I wonder if the Fostoria Jamestown does that. It might be a different formulation because it's, uh, it looks a, little more red. it's a little more yep. true red. So, oh, but, no, but you do get a little bit of the glow. Yeah, cadmium was definitely something you see in a lot of red glass. Nice. And cadmium is a great thing in the glass. 
they have a whole bunch of face mugs here and we're all just sort of funnily enough we've just sort of converged on them all at once yes this guy's got a great face it looks like somebody said i can make one of those so it looks like my grandfather (laughs) (laughs) now do you look for a particular maker when you look for these is it i don't know how you pronounce it m-a-h-o-n mahon man or man yeah Yeah, I've heard that that's one. I look for a company only because I remember when we lived in San Diego when I was a kid in 1971, there was one called Funky Junk, and I have never seen one of theirs, but they did this style. And I know because it was that far back and that was a new thing, I think that would be a thing to look for. But I've never seen a piece of theirs other than the set that we had that my mom unfortunately gave away when we moved one time, as she was inclined to do. It's probably why I'm an antique dealer now is because I would have to get back all the stuff that we gave up. But this one, I believe, is Pottery Craft, the company I wrote the book on. And this one was a commercially made one because, of course, they saw that the studio potters were doing well with these. And yes, you see, it's hard to see, but you can see the Pottery Craft signature in 1977 right at the bottom. So this was a phenomenon for a while in the early and mid 70s. And that one is priced at $20. Well, in the middle of all of this, we have a couple of things. This is a neat pattern glass pattern, which I should know the name of off the top of my head and have forgotten. And Danny, our pattern glass collector is here and we're both gonna scratch our heads, but we'll figure it out. Something loop, yeah, we're gonna put it in, I'll have to look it up and we'll put it in the uh, comments here. But next to it, the thing I really was going for is this green lighter, which appears to be Murano from the 1950s. Oh, and it throws a spark, so that's good. It is priced at, let's see here, come on, $35. If it was a tad cheaper, I might buy it, so we might see if they might do it for a tad cheaper. And he found something she knows I'm familiar with. Yes. Tell us, George, you actually wrote a book on Treasure Craft, didn't you? I did, yes. Yes. It was so much fun. Yeah, Treasure Craft and their sister company, Pottery Craft. And I got interested because it was the last California pottery company that was a big producer that no one seemed to know anything about. And all my friends who knew all the Bowers and the the Catalinas and all those would say, oh, yeah, yeah, they made a bunch of stuff. And I thought, why doesn't anyone know about them? And then I discovered that their little pixies were things my grandmother had, and she bought those back in the 40s and 50s. I had no idea they produced back then. And one thing led to another, and I just ended up writing a book about it because it just ended up fascinating me. I now, Tiffany just saying. has her eye on the Anna Lee today, and I wanted to show you this one because it is actually... 1964, so this is early, early in their production. And you can see the face. $24 on her. Oh, Danny did find something cool. I'm going to eavesdrop. So, yeah, this is... I don't is... know much about this, George. You tell me. I just I just like that it's... like. Oh, it's, it's just neat because it's an old yeah. store display. Yeah, and the little flashlight bulbs. The thing is, is that if you could find those old flashlights, right. they would be useful to somebody. So... Uh, Plus, it's just one of those interesting things that you see. These are the kind of things that I find in estate sales in like the guy's shop sitting in the bottom of a pile. And they're so interestingly graphic that people are collecting them just for that. All of a sudden, like old light bulbs, old Edison bulbs. uh, They were 50 cents each. Wow, yes. (laughs) Which was probably about what you paid for the flashlight. I'm going to have to stop at the top, start at the top and go, let's try that again. I'm going to have to start at the top and go down because Danny just pointed this out to me and uh, she's going to show us because it's so big. Thank you. Yes, that really helps. Okay. <laughs> so follow her hand down and then you will see that. Yeah. Down at the bottom, this is a copper skimmer. And this had to be for some industrial purpose where you're skimming something out of a vat of some sort of fluid. And the question is, what was it made for? Because it's clearly old. It's got an oak handle that's turned. It looks like it dates to about 1900. But it had to be something that was in a huge vat where you couldn't get close to it for some reason. And you had to get something out of that. And I'm very curious what that is. If any of you have any idea, tell us in the comments. Otherwise, I'll do some research. 
Tiffany found the Lucite shell seahorses that were very popular. They made those in Florida. I think they made them in California too. Probably here we'd be looking at those. Those are in really good condition. I, you have to check those out because sometimes they're broken and re-glued and you can't always tell. Made with abalone shells taken by divers from the ocean. Craftsman of Betty shells. I bet that was California. I haven't seen a Betty shell label before. Those are cool. How much are the pair? I think they're 40 for the pair. That seems reasonable. I, I definitely get about 25 to 30 for the big one. Well, Danny just told me this is one of her favorite booths, and I have to say I was immediately headed there because it says anything with a green X is 50% off. So apparently this dealer who has very nice things, I see good old ceramics, I see carnival glass, I see... Uh, bunch of things that I think are interesting. So we're going to take a look through and see if we might find some deals here that we can pass on to our collectors. So okay. I love this. When somebody gives it as a gift and they put the date they gave it as the yeah, gift. Yeah, that's so cute. So yes. Just absolutely say, well, we know it's at least. Uh, we know it's at least that old because Ken gave it to somebody. Yes. And actually, I think that piece is 1940s, to tell so, you the yeah. truth. Yeah. So he uh, he was a thrifter and gave it as a gift. Oh, uh, very clever. Well, let's see what they have here. I love the Roseville Fuchsia. This is still one of the most popular patterns, and they are not putting that on sale, and I don't blame them, but I do really like it. This Weller piece with the uh, horseman, which is called Chase, is a neat piece. It's almost got a Wedgwood type of relief to it, and that's pretty hard to do in earthenware because it's not as precise as the slip porcelain, so I think that's well done, and that one's $275. So for what they have, the prices are good. Can we find anything to resell? Well, we're going to keep looking and see. A nice piece of rookwood back there with the nude, and that one is priced at three fifty. That's done on metal. This is enamel, yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't know Sasha B did anything on enamel. He. He started doing the enamel work in the six, late 60s and 70s because he had a nervous breakdown and gave up the factory, the pottery factory. And then when he started doing things again, his friends were like, you should do enamel work. And then he started doing that. And that was his next phase. And so the rooftops is definitely like a holdover from the other stuff. But that's a great price for a piece that large. That gorgeous? And that's interesting that Laura told you about yeah. that because she and I, I had a bunch at the Portland show that she came to and oh, I, really? we were talking about it there. And there's another piece here. That's the oh, nice. Yes, yeah. that's cute. Oh, and only $12. That's actually a great price too for what it is. One of us should get that. You should get it. Would you like it? Well, the first thing I'm going to look at in here is this little vase because she says Rushmore, South Dakota pottery. And this is one of the potteries from there you don't really see very much. South Dakota has a pottery tradition because they had the School of Mines pottery. And a woman was involved with the founding of that who was really good. And I like this piece. I don't know the connection to Rushmore pottery, but for that price, I'm going to take it and we're going to find out. So that one's for me. <laughs> and this, I hope she doesn't mind being on camera, but this is Lupe. Lupe! And she has been just wonderful and very helpful to us. Everyone here has been Merry great. Christmas. Yes, Merry Christmas. We're here right before Christmas. You'll see this video afterwards. Okay, let's see what else is in here. I've sold a couple of the gold dust washing powders. This is an interesting piece that looks almost like bronze. And I would like to take a look at this up close. Lupe, is it all right if I put my hand in the case? I wanted sure. to ask first. Yes. I'm just going to take a look at her. Okay, she actually feels like resin in my hand, but she's still pretty well done. Oh, and she's only $22, and they're saying green stone, 1950s. Obviously, it's Venus de Milo. There is a real interest in neoclassicism. A lot of younger people are looking for these sorts of things, so I, I think I'm going to take that to the counter as well. I have a feeling that will sell in Florida where I do shows. Oh, okay. And then we're going to take a look at this. Uh, may I open this side? Sure. Thank you. We're going to take a look in here at this Catalina piece just because uh, Danny pointed it out and I had shown you a piece of Catalina earlier. We're going to see what the mark on this one is. This is the big carafe. These carafes were really popular in the 1930s. 
And this one just says Catalina. So this is after Franciscan took it over. The story on this is that uh, Wrigley of Wrigley's Chewing Gum wanted to build a casino on Catalina Island in 1929. And they did. It's still there. It's a great place to go visit. And so they needed tile work. So he started a pottery factory there. And then they made pieces like this and sent them to the mainland. But it got to be too expensive to ship. So he sold out to Franciscan and they moved it to the mainland. And they changed the name from Catalina Island to Catalina Pottery. So when you see just Catalina or Catalina Pottery, it's the later stuff. It's still really good, though. Oh, yes. First of all, I want to tell you before I look at this with her, if you don't know the niche lady, you really should subscribe to her channel because she is a really amazing thrifter. Amazing. She's been around. Uh, yes, Tiffany thinks so, too. Um, she's been around antiques and vintage for a long time, but she thrifts. They both thrift all sorts of things, new, old and in between. And they know a whole lot about things that are collectible and valuable of eras that I don't necessarily know. So definitely check out the niche lady. The other thing is that she has opened a store, which we're going to show you in another video. And it is a reseller paradise and a collector's paradise as well. So definitely she's somebody to know. Now she was asking me about this piece. This is Weller and this is the Kingfisher. And this picture was very, very popular around the 1920s and 30s. Originally they made it in multicolor where the Kingfisher is painted out in blues and the colors Kingfishers would be. And there's an ivory background and the ones that are multicolor, the ones that are multicolor are really good value now. Now the one later on as they started to have more financial trouble they did them in the single colors and they're good but at that price I would say that's probably a collector price rather than a dealer price. Cowan was in Cleveland, Ohio and they were uh, some of their artists and designers were from the Cleveland School which is a well-known group of art people in Cleveland around the late 1920s. And that's a pretty piece and the price seems fine for what it is, especially with the discount. Sorry. I, I, I squirreled up here to the flower frog depression glass. Uh, little Do you want me to help you, Diane? This is rosemead and this is from North Dakota. I've always liked rosemead pottery. Another price. Dakota era, another Dakota area potter. And rosemead operated through the 40s. I don't know what the values on these are currently, so I'm going to take a look. The rose meat has a hairline, unfortunately, which is too bad because I looked it up and this piece does sell for about $50, but I can't sell it for that if it's not uh, in good shape. Danny found you a piece of, and it's Annalie. Wow, and $10. What a wonderful price and mistletoe. Well, that's appropriate for this time of year. Oh, how cute. Let's see which tag. See, USA. So 1993. And now that we've seen some more recent tags, I'm definitely realizing that we want to look for USA made on those. And that is great. What a good price. And perfect for Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> I have to say, Danny pays attention because I was just talking about how I wasn't sure that Noritake had made Lesterware. And we saw that one piece that wasn't Noritake. Well, here is Lesterware with an interesting dragon piece. And it has the Noritake mark. So Noritake indeed did make Lester Ware. And these are actually pretty well priced at $6 each. So we have learned something that we didn't know for sure when we came in here. And you know, knowledge is power and knowledge has power to help you enjoy your antiques and collectibles more. So if you are enjoying this video and you like getting knowledge and these sorts of things, please subscribe to my channel and please click that button to tell everybody you like this. Please leave a comment. It really helps us with YouTube. If you participate and engage with the channel, then they let other people know that this is a cool thing worth doing. And I really am so excited to get to talk about antiques and vintage and try to share the knowledge I have and the knowledge that I accrue is I hang out with people like Danny and Tiffany and we all learn things together and share that with you. George, I have a question if you have a minute. Yes, I do. Um, I know you know a lot about jadeite, but I came across a couple of pieces over here and I was interested when I shone my black light on them, they actually glow. And I wanted to know that um, 
my question is, if they glow, are they still jadeite or are they something else? They are, but they're a different company that used a different formula. And I'm glad you brought this up because I actually hadn't shown a, J, uh, a black light on these old ones. Now, here's the Fire King from the 50s. Does not glow at all. These are McKee glass, and McKee was known for custard glass. And so when they did their jadeite formula in the 1930s, it had a custard base, and the custard used the uranium. So the 1930s McKee glows, and the 1950s jadeite by Fire King does not. Another piece over here. Yes, and that one's going to glow yeah. too. And they glow really well. So yeah. if you're into glowy glass and you like jadeite, the McKee is the stuff to look for because it does both those things. I love the Delphite too. I think it's great. They called it turquoise in their line, but I there's a lot in the 30s that was by other com yeah. companies that's a similar yeah. shade. Yeah, yeah, just maybe a little less bright than real Delphite, I guess, but I love it. Annie found something really cool, and it has a mark on it that's worth showing. It's a carafe. It says Gabriel Pasadena. Uh, Gabriel ended up merging with Winfield pottery, so you will see both marks on okay. some sets. And so, yeah, that's, that's what you're looking price. at. Yeah. $12. And it's 25% off. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. Yeah. See, this is why it's good to hang out with thrifters because they know how to sniff out the real bargains. <laughs> yes. Never underestimate the power of the toilet. Right? That's funny. $12. Just a Japan. And you put your cigarettes. I guess that tells you what they thought of cigarettes. <laughs> Danny just pointed these out to me. We're in Las Vegas, and so of course we're going to see gaming-related collectibles. And so this is a little pocket watch-style roulette game from the 1930s from Germany. And then this one is a dice game from the same era. They're priced at $125 a piece. They're pretty hard to find. Behind that, we have a NASA ashtray. Those sell in Florida. $25 is about the right price. And then this one says this beaded piece is a Civil War era chaplain's card holder, and it absolutely could be that age. It's beautiful. So we're having fun with jewelry, and I think Tiffany found the best deal. It, it's Jelly Belly-ish, and it definitely has the look, and the price seems very good. And this is a very pretty bird, too. I found these. This one, I believe, is Judy Lee, and while their construction is not always so amazing, the size of this is really incredible, and I think that's what would sell this piece. And then this is Juliana, and they showed this next to it. Now, this one's 150 I don't know whether there's room in it, but I can show you how in this case, in this necklace, the construction is just like the bracelets, where they have the five loops, and that's how you can identify Juliana, because Juliana never had any permanent mark, and it oftentimes had paper labels that were taken off immediately when they were purchased. So... I'm intrigued by that set. We will consider whether we can make an offer on that. One thing you have to look at, especially yeah. with Judy Lee, because the construction was a little flimsier, is to make sure it's all there. It's and corny. I just noticed this and this seem to be missing. Yeah. So I'm going to leave right. that one, even though it's a great size. And the Juliana is one of those where you take a roll of the dice. It could sell for double. It could sell for the price on it. I think I'm going to leave it. Danny's going to tell me something I did not know found this out that ebay is now restricting sellers from selling the old bubble lights because they are a hazard and i can't remember if it's because of the fire hazard or the fact that the liquid in here is toxic oh and if you break it then you have an issue well i have to say if you really want to get into old products and things that could be harmful for you um ebay could ban a whole lot of stuff yeah and so then so and then you will have to go to real world sellers or other sources to get it so that is something to watch yeah that looks like it's a real mid-century yeah i think so with yeah. the folded handles i don't remember who that designer is though i wonder if they tell us anything about it Sutcliffe of Todd Morgan. Oh, oh that makes sense. Yes, this is probably part of, uh, there were various things they called them. Um, I think G Plan was one of them. There was a lot of teak modernist furniture made in England at that time. And it's a great alternative to some of the American because the designs are good and the scale's a little smaller because the English typically don't have as large a house. So if you're an apartment dweller, you might prefer this as opposed to some of the giant pieces that were made by some of our American firms.
I like this piece. We're starting to see younger people being interested in traditional furniture again, and this has a French style. And we're having a French 1870s, 1890s. Well, it is definitely French. You can tell by the paneling and the asymmetrical design on the panels in the doors. And then we can take a look here. You know, I actually think their attribution is right. It's hard to say because this one, they've obviously redone. These are newer handles. Yeah, what I'm noticing and so newer wood. This drawer looks authentic. Yes. And this the other drawers like were restored. restored. And it's all, this is missing the dovetailing that this has. Right, exactly. Probably what it was was it was in poor condition. And so when they went to restore it, they had to put new sides on that's and they just glued and nailed. And that's why it didn't look right. Exactly. That's very good eye to notice okay, that. So this one is. So that, just that drawer. Is just that one drawer, because you can exactly. see where yeah, this they had some uh, aging. Yeah, when you see that, and of course that makes sense because it's old enough to have patinaed on the inside as well as the outside from oxidation. So not a bad looking piece. How much is that? $22.50. $22.50. So one of the reasons that these two ladies do so well and do so well at thrift stores is because they're in Las Vegas, and that is a clue. If you are in a place where there's not a lot of antiques because it's a fairly newly established area, Las Vegas was only settled around 1900, the thing to look for is everybody came from somewhere else. That's why we're finding Ray Harm prints from Kentucky. That's why we're finding beautiful 1920s carved furniture sets from Chicago. That's why we're finding English pottery. We are getting interesting things because so many people came here from everywhere else. So if you're going on vacation and you're looking for some place that you can go antiquing and thrifting, a city that is newer may not be a bad choice, actually, if you like antiques and vintage because people bring their favorite things with them. And by the way, if I haven't mentioned it before, Tiffany's channel is Thrifting Vegas and Danny's channel is the niche lady and they both do a really great job of thrifting of talking to you about things that they find that sell whether they're newer or older and why they think that they're good to buy and so you can get a great education from them and i'm having a lot of fun being with them today this booth really does have inexpensive prices and i have to say danny and i both noticed this because it's so strange and of course gee surprise it's made in japan we're not really sure what he's doing with that rooster, but I am not a fan of roosters, so I approve. <laughs> We've been talking about it. It's okay. I didn't know until I looked at the name. Pottery craft. Pottery craft, oh, yes. And I that is... The little, the little one with the little leaves. The little, like, oh, the botanica. Oh, that's a great line. They didn't do yeah. that very much where it's in, impressed under the surface. And this is another one, just like the orange one we were looking at from the 60s, where the decorators were the ones who said, you know, let's just do a natural, we'll just dab it on and yeah. we'll let it flow wherever it goes. And it has all the look of studio pottery. They really were the ones who figured out how to make commercial pottery look like studio pottery. And that's why it was a big thing. It saved the company. I mean, it was, it was so perfect for the 70s that when the other stuff went out of style, it didn't matter because they just sold a ton of this. There was even a huge piece of it on the set of Three's Company. Oh. George. I have a pile going. A wonderful that stone that owl. That may be a Tiffany. Tiffany? Okay. This, little this is Italian. And Tanala. it has wonderful eyes. And it's only $15. That. that seems like a very good price. Right? Really good price. Definitely a buy. I'll tell you, shopping with thrifters is great because they really, they just sniff out the deals. I'll tell you. Danny was just telling me that the Playboy Bunny on the right is the person who started this antique mall. That is a great story. And there she is in her Playboy Bunny regalia around 1965, I would say. Oh, how neat. And there's a headshot of her, Ruthie Lewis. So this is the person who started the mall. It's really interesting. You know, everyone has a past. Uh, one of the malls I'm in in Florida was originally started by a very famous professional tennis player who loved antiques, and that was her retirement business. This is really fun. She's got her contract and the whole thing. Oh, and her original badge. What did you just say? Badge. Badge. Oh, she scared me.
Oh, and look, her original pasties from the 1950s with all the rhinestones. Wow, that's really fun. The spitting image slippers. Oh, I got these for a friend of mine's dad who was a uh, big fan of the show in the 1980s. Oh, that's funny. George and Barbara Bush, yes. $35. You know, that might not be a bad price for these now. The spitting image, uh, since spitting image came out again in England, a new edition about... Uh, Oh, the early 2000s, people are actually collecting these older pieces from the original show in the 80s. It was considered quite controversial at the time because the caricatures were deliberately not flattering, but it also made household names of a lot of English politicians who then clamored to have their themselves depicted as puppets on the show. Okay, Danny's going to show us how this guy works. This is an old homemade toy. And when you let go, the spring winds and he climbs right up that pole. That is really cool. You know, this is the kind of thing that dads would go off and play around in their shop for hours and hours and come out with for their kids back when people did that sort of thing. Um, that's really neat. And I think this one's doing a discount, but I still think that'd make it about a hundred and a half if I understand right. Okay, so Danny's going to deal us 21 or something here, I think. Yep. <laughs> because this is an original... And I would say from the colors, probably maybe 1980s version. It is a game table with all the chips and the four stools from the Stardust Casino. Old casino stuff that actually was used like this and is deaccessioned now is definitely, it's like Disney stuff in Florida. There are collectors for these. The condition seems good overall. It's got all the stools. Yeah, oh, it looks original to me. Uh, well, you know. You could set up an illegal card game in your own house. Well, we're working it out at the counter. Our total sale between the three of us is somewhere in the $1,300 range. So Paradise Valley certainly was a paradise for antique and vintage collectors. And I recommend anybody coming to Vegas. It is worth the drive over here. It's only about 25 minutes away from the Strip. And you will have a great time. So we closed them down. And we were really, really, really self-restrained. We only have this much stuff to put in the car only 72 boxes <laughs> oh and that table over there yes that's right <laughs> but not those lockers although i wouldn't mind do we have room <laughs> <laughs> well this has been so much fun doing this with you today i can't wait until i see another store tomorrow but we're going to leave that a secret until we get there and this is george the antique nomad signing off with my friends in vegas and you know what uh, what you do in Vegas does not stay in Vegas. You're all going to get to see all of it. So keep watching all of our channels, The Niche Lady, Thrifting Vegas, and The Guy with the Antennas. I'm the <laughs> Antique Nomad. And, you know, we did a whole lot of shopping today, so there's going to be multiple videos. So watch all our channels and you get to see all the fun. Bye for now. Bye. Okay. If you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also, click thumbs up to like this video and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com, for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.